Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we're going through Linux Mint 20, the beta version that has just been released to us. We're just going to go through the desktop here a little bit, figure out what's new. I have the Welcome to Linux Mint greeter here right in front of me on my brand new Linux Mint 20 installation. This is the Mate Desktop 64-bit version. And if you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, please make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. The reason I kept the welcome screen up here is because I wanted to go through some of these steps. Something new that is offered to us is that we can choose between different colors here in Mint as far as the desktop goes. You can choose whether or not you want the light or dark desktop theme. I'm just going to go ahead and do the dark and then you can also choose what color that goes with that theme and we'll be able to see a difference I believe if we go ahead and pop open a file browser. As you can see we can select between the various different themes here. Whatever you like everything goes pretty well with the design here. None of the colors are too contrasting or cause issues with being able to see either the icons and or any text on them but it is a little neat feature. I'm going to go with this orange color here and I'll just go ahead and keep this for my temporary theme. You can also shut off the greeter by just unchecking the show this dialogue at startup, which I'll do since I finished going through it here. Of course, it does take you through some of the basic system steps like it always has and we'll go down to documentation if you need some help or contributing or if you want to go ahead and contribute you can let's go ahead and exit out of the greeter and explore a couple new things that have been introduced in this new version of linux mint 20. of course this is the beta version they're still testing out bugs at linux mint one thing that they've changed as well down here in the right hand corner we see that there is a new tray icon set. They just appear a little bit different, but they chose to spruce things up a little bit. Down here, you can see I have my wire connection as well as volume control. Any updates that I may or may not have here in the update manager, as well as the system reports that tell you if there are any current errors it's suggesting that I go ahead and install language packs as well as multimedia codecs. I believe this is a recent feature that was added to Linux Mint and is a great thing to go ahead and give you basic crash reports as well as system reports to help you optimize your system. Another big thing with this Linux Mint 20 beta is something called Warpinator. So let's go ahead and search for it and open it up so we can check it out. This is a new piece of software developed by Linux Mint that allows you to search for other computers on the network and then send and receive files across your network, alleviating the use of USBs and other storage disks that help you share files. Instead, you can use this Warpinator in order to do so. Now, I don't have any other computers with Warpinator on them. I did go ahead and try to get this installed on Windows because I figured, hey, I do have some Windows computers. I'd like to be able to go ahead and try out Warpinator. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. And what I have in front of me here now is the GitHub page for Warpinator. You can see right here what type of builds you can create from it. Currently it supports Ubuntu 20.04 or it seems like any Debian based distributions. It says for Mint 19 or Ubuntu 18.04 users that you can also install Warpinator, but it says this otherwise clause. So I figured, hey, maybe it works on Windows. I did go through it. It was quite a pain in order to try getting it to run. I ran into some compilation issues. I'm going to try going back into it before long, but hopefully the Linux Mint team does end up offering an executable that you can simply install on your Windows system eventually because let's be honest, it's nice to be able to use file sharing with Windows and unless they do, I'm going to find myself going back to Samba. So anyways, you can install Warpinator on other Debian based distributions and then be able to go ahead and find the computers if they all exist on the same network. I would make sure that your firewall settings are also turned off if you have any problems on your local network. Otherwise, it should just work. You'll be able to select the computer's name and transfer files over. It's a very cool app that they made. I just hope that they make it more compatible and allow it to work with other operating systems easily. All right, and what else is new is if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and you have the proprietary drivers installed, down in this system tray, you'll have the option 
that shows you what's currently rendering the graphics for your card as well as it allows you to get into system settings. I don't have an Nvidia graphics card so I do not have the drivers installed nor does the new task icon show up. Another new thing that's been introduced is if you go ahead and get a Debian package so let's go ahead and let's just look for Chrome. I know that they have a Debian package available is that GDB, the graphical dev package installation tool has received a graphical overhaul, meaning it looks a little different. So let's just check that out real quick. I went ahead and launched my dev package for Google Chrome directly with GDB. And here's how it currently looks. It does follow the styles that we set up. So it's got the dark theme in the background and the orange backdrop in color. I'm gonna go ahead and install the package just to kind of look at what's looking new. Not too much has changed. It just looks a little better, more modern and sleek, but you wouldn't notice much of a difference unless you use this fairly often. Nonetheless, it is a great addition to Linux Mint 20. Some other improvements here in Linux Mint 20 are that the Grub menu is always visible now. No way of getting past it unless you go ahead into the Grub settings and actually change up the config yourself in order to get rid of that Grub boot menu. Of course, the Linux kernel has been updated to version 5.4. And something else that's new is that by default, Snap packages and Snap has been disabled by default on Ubuntu-based distributions. Of course, Snap is enabled by default since Canonical owns Snap and the Snap Store. So they go ahead and try pushing it. Instead, in here, if you want to use Snaps, you're going to have to now enable it by yourself. And uh, some of the themes, I believe, have also received a bit of an update. So if we check out the appearance here, let's see if we can check out the Mint Y themes, which have received a little bit of an overhaul, I believe. You can simply click on a theme and it will automatically of course, there are many themes available here, so you can go through all of the Mint Y flavor and select whatever one you like. What I understand is some of the contrast as well as colors have been improved upon in this uh, Mint Y theme based on community feedback. So make sure to go ahead and check out the various themes available to you. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this one here. And when it comes down to the install portion of Linux Mint, everything has remained the same. There haven't been any changes here. But what I've always liked about Linux Mint is that it's super easy to go ahead and install. Not many options. You just fly through the installer and get things going really quick. But if you do have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can select the compatibility mode for the installer. That way you can install your graphics drivers with no mode set. Now you can also launch a terminal and very easily offload your graphics profile. As you can see, we have two options here, the NVIDIA Optimus offload to GLX and the offload to Vulkan. This allows you to easily switch between the profiles and use whatever fits your needs the best. And that's really it. There are a few more updates that you can go ahead and read about on the official Linux Mint website. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of all the latest updates in Linux Mint 20 the beta version. I'm sure there are going to be a few changes and updates yet before they release Linux Mint 20 just to weed out some of the bugs. But until then, I'm excited using the beta. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below and hit that like button for me. If you want to, feel free to go ahead and join the channel Discord server where we talk about Linux and programming. Come on and stop on by. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.